Hi guys. guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. And I have Detlef with me again today. We're Thanks, mate. This. Yeah, we'll have to stop meeting like this. Yeah, this is getting weird. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see we're on PCBWay.com at the moment. A week or two ago, I actually published a video where we can get some electronic projects, the ones we have currently in progress, and looking for some new ones. And one of those projects was a fume extractor, solder fume extractor which is this one. So this was one of the entries into the eighth annual electronic projects competition. Okay, this is the fume extractor. And this guy has gone into a great deal of detail on building this. So there's a video on YouTube. I can link that from here. I don't think it's in English, but we can do so. This is the extractor. So it has lighting in there. He shows how it's working. This is all 3D printed and he goes into a huge amount of detail as I say how to construct this the circuit design we'll look at the schematic in a moment the LEDs that are in there PCBs okay the switch PCB which is separate and then how to assemble it and this uses well this is a Pico as it's called which I think some sort of Raspberry Pi I think yeah okay and we continue down how to wire it up. So you can see the amount of effort this guy's put into here is incredible. And further down, we have the schematics. We have the files to actually 3D print the enclosure. How to put the filter in, which you use a piece of cloth for that. Yeah. And it's all here for you. Code, schematics, and the CAD files. And the schematic is here. Now... One of the people who watched this video was Detlef. And Detlef saw me on the Sunday morning just after that and said, Richard, I need to have a word with you about that project. <laughs> so, Detlef, what did you tell me? Well, I don't want to really bash this guy because he put a lot of effort in there. But this is one of the most over-engineered projects I've ever seen in my life. And mm. it's not even a good engineered one. So uh, there are lots of stuff you can do better with this thing. And yeah, we talked about this and then we decided to make this video. Yeah. Did you in fact say this looks like something of a school project? Yeah. A school, a school engineering yeah. this, science. This feels like a guy who uh, learns this in school somehow and slapped together some information that he maybe got in, in school. But <sighs> there's, uh, from an engineering point of view, there are so many things that you can do better. So uh, I think it's worse to redesign this. Redo this. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I will just mention, by the way, and I mentioned in the original video, you could actually buy a solder fume extractor for about the same, probably less money it would cost you to build this. The whole real point of this is because we've not done anything with 3D printed enclosures before. Mm -hmm. Thought you guys might be interested in that. And Carlos is our resident expert on this. So this really is more a matter of showing what we can do rather than really the economics of building this one, yeah? But Detlef wants to redesign it, so what's wrong with it and what would you like to change? Okay, let's let's, let's start at the... <laughs> Where do I start? Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, let's start with the CPU, because okay. uh, he uses a Pico for that. Uh, this is a RP2040. So this is a dual core 133 megahertz CPU. And you need to know the only thing this thing does is generating two PWMs. For the fun. For the fun. For the fun and for the LED because we Okay. Yeah. And I saw this and I thought, okay, oh, okay, GPIO1, GPIO2, this is something that you probably use for input output, STL, SDA, okay, STL, SDA, fine. Uh, let's see where the next side of this uh, project is uh, because STL, SDA is I squared C. Mm -hmm. And if you scroll down to the next page, there is no next page. Ah. So uh, there's actually no real reason for STL, SDA, no I squared C. So he's using GP1 and GP0 to drive two MOSFETs, yeah, yeah. one for the LED, one mm, for the fan. Yeah. Um, while, while you're there, um, he's using two different MOSFETs here, and I have no idea why he's doing that. Because mm. when you're doing something like that, uh, you normally want to keep the... Uh, the um, the bill of materials? The bomb, yeah, yeah. as small as possible. So uh, drop in the same MOSFETs. In yeah. There. Yeah, because there's no reason for doing that. Then, next thing, uh, the fan is an inductive load. So, 
you probably want to have a flyback diode. Flyback diode on there. Just to be sure, you know, just to be sure, if this is a, just a cheap fan, you will have inductive spikes because you're pulsing them. Yeah, some noise kilohertz. and back EMF. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there will be back EMF coming in like crazy, and the MOSFETs will probably run for a time, but mm -hmm. not forever. Mm. Uh, and it's just good practice. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no idea why you're using a, a pull-down resistor on one of the MOSFETs and not on the other one. True. Um, see R3. R3 yes. Uh, yeah. And R3 you normally do a bit bigger. And then R4 you do smaller. So I um, would go for 47K to 100 ohms or something. Okay. Here. Which I did. And yeah. the same on this one. Yeah, the same on that one, yeah. Again, at a flyback diode. Could you scroll up again, please? Yeah. And remember the little Pico is sitting there. 133 mm -hmm. megahertz, two cores, and it's doing PWM. Uh -huh. This is so oversized. Yeah. I can understand if you say, okay, this is what I had laying around. Yeah. I can, I can relate to this, but from an engineering point of view, this is so wasteful. So yeah. really wasteful. And you're doing one thing you see on the, on the power supply thing there, AMS 1117 5 volt. Yeah. Yeah. So you're generating from the 12 volt that's coming in, you're generating 5 volt from that one. Mm -hmm. And then you're generating 3.3 volt on the Pico board itself. Okay. Uh, so uh, you're driving a heavy load CPU on there and uh, you're doing this all with a little AMS 1117. So, uh -huh. so the, this, amount, so the current versus the voltage drop, or, yeah. or rather the amount of current times the voltage mm -hmm. drop is the watts that this poor little thing will be. Yeah, this this is drawing a lot of current here and the uh, little AMS 1117 needs to get rid of seven volts somehow. So yeah, you're saying, if this was drawing saying 100 milliamps, where the seven volt drop is still 0.7 of a watt. I mean, mm. that would be getting warm, yeah? Yeah, it will get warm. And yeah. I'm not sure how much power this little processor actually draws. Well, more. So of course, dual core, and uh, this keeps the loop keeps running all the time. So uh, this isn't really an ideal version here. So this could be dissipating a watt or more than one watt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see the problem. Without trying this out i can't tell you that because mm -hmm. uh, we don't have this thing lying around but you know i uh looked through this and i thought okay we can do better i'm sure we can so that would you like to show the guys what you've done and here we are in the design program so this is fumi well that was a word i came up with <laughs> everything has names here guys yeah. everything has names <laughs> so we needed a cute name here uh, i had yeah. call this old smoky oh this is also this is also nice yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I went along with, uh, I stole a lot of ideas here, but I uh, re resized where I thought it was wise to do that. Mm -hmm. So what I did here, uh, we're using the same MOSFETs for everything. And by the way, you don't need any specific MOSFETs here. This is, these are the ones we actually have over there in the, uh, in the boxes over okay. there. Okay. And um, I use them all in my projects all the time. IRLB8721. These are logic level MOSFETs. They would work fine with 3.3 volt. They're happy with 5 volt. And uh, since this I, is the gate turn on voltage. Yeah, since I'm simply using them for feeding the P PWM right from the uh, from the CPU over here. Okay, and these are several amps. I mean, they're quite high powered. I think 30 amps. Oh, that's plenty. And these are N channel MOSFETs. N channel, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Anything goes here, so uh, you can uh, connect anything. If you want to connect a wind tur turbine to this, uh -huh. that's your thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, buttons over here, I have this weird, weird designed buttons. Do you see them in a moment uh -huh. on, the, on the PCB? Uh, for uh, This is a multi, whatever you can use on this one. Okay. Um, and my CPU is an 80 tiny. This little thing is uh, the CPU for that. That without, thing there. Yeah, without the uh, programming thing. So an 8 pin thing oh so this is your programmer yeah, with the programmer. so that is the cpu we're going to use for the yeah. project yeah. yeah yeah we don't need more because mm. uh, it's two buttons and two P pwms yeah yeah uh i'm sticking with the five volt ams 1117 because the cpu is fine with that the okay. mosfets are fine with that and if i would go for 3.3 uh you need mosfets that can switch on with 3.3 yes so uh, five volt is a is a way to go here, and also that gives less power dissipation in the regulator. It, absolutely, the uh, yeah. little uh, regulator doesn't have, doesn't have to burn so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we look at the PCB, this is a two layer because well it's the same, and I 
mainly kept to through hole. So okay. I, I know a lot of you people are happy with through hole, and I starting to use weird shapes for my <laughs> designs nowadays <Okay. laughs> just because I can just because you can yeah I noticed the AMS 1117 is a surface mount but mm. in fact you can only get those in SMD mm. yeah but for you guys out there there's no reason why you couldn't fit in um, 7805 yeah yeah in hindsight this would work too but I'm so used to having AMS 1117 somewhere nowadays. Yeah. These are the new 7805s. Uh, yeah, I've seen these in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if we have check for the 3D view here, this is how the thing will look. So you got those both buttons here for the fan and for the LED. Mm -hmm. We simply slap in 12 volt over here and mark where the positive edge is. Yep. Uh, same for the fan and for the LED. Okay. Since I'm using the same MOSFET on both channels, it doesn't matter what you connect where, as, as long as the, uh, you press the right button. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So you mean the fan or the LED can be switched around, but surely the PWM is different for each device? Yeah, there are two PWMs on okay. this one, yeah. yeah. And we actually stole the code from the uh, project, yeah. The original one. So the mm -hmm. code for that Pico, although it's a Raspberry Pi type thing, runs on your tiny little eight-legged AT tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it runs fine there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so uh, we don't need this completely oversized CPU that can actually do video out and all this stuff. Um, yeah, we're only running this little tiny, mm. itty tiny. And I see you have uh, four resistors, but two are 100 ohm, two are 47K. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, the, the two diodes are the same type as each other. Yeah, it says under, yeah. The, under the things here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so the bill of materials actually is much shorter of here. You're re reusing the same values. Mm. Yeah. Makes course, sense. Yeah, of course, I'm not not planning on you doing this anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, same I noticed with the capacitors, 10 microfarad, very common value. Mm -hmm. They're both the same, 100 nanofarad for the little decoupling capacitor. Yeah. So yeah, these are very easy to find parts. Yeah, this should be something. If you're doing a bit of electronics, you probably have this laying around. Yeah. Maybe not the itty tiny, but everything else, yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So we have the laptop set up here. This is the programmer. By the way, Debt built this, so if you guys are interested, have you got any links for this thing? Uh, it's on my website, well, okay. on my YouTube thing in particular. On Debt's YouTube, yeah. so I'll give you the link in case yeah. you're interested in building this little programmer. Yeah, and then we actually already flashed the software in there. We need to order the PCBs anyways, uh -huh. but we can try the software with, uh, because two pins are buttons and the other one is a PWM. So, so we can see if it runs. We can see if it runs, yeah. Okay, so you guys will want to see the code. Let's just switch mm -hmm. camera. Uh, okay, just the main points here to show you guys. Uh, so up there in line 20, we do in a definition which pin does what. Okay. And down here, there's a state for the fan and for the LED, because mm -hmm. this has different lightning levels here. Okay. We're doing the setup here, so this is an easy, normal thing. Okay. Yeah, so buttons yeah. are inputs yeah. and the yeah. LED yeah. is outputs, yeah. Yeah, there's a button logic, including... Um, Debouncing. Debouncing, yeah. And this is quite quite clever over here because he's using a step up and mm -hmm. uh, the modular four, this percentage sign over okay. here, uh, this cuts this when it reaches four, it simply switches back to zero. So mm -hmm. this is how I would do this too, by the so way. So there's four states. So this switches between off, slow, mm -hmm. medium, fast. Yeah, I show you. Yeah, because he's okay. using this apply PWM over here and this has cases over there, switching okay. cases. This is why this feels like it's a homework from an electronics project because, oh, you need to use switch as a thing. Well, you should use switch in this case, yep. but this is something that normally school projects does. Uh -huh. yep. And you can tell by the analog write. Analog write sounds like we're actually writing an analog value. We don't. This is PWM for the micros. Okay. And you can tell uh, 128, 204, and 255. It's uh, the speeds. Half speed, speed, three, half quarters. Speed, three quarters. Three quarters. Oh, 100. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, this is how this is done. And if you look down down here in the black bar yep. down there, Sketch uses 12% of program storage. And that's on your little processor? On an 8 kilo kilobyte thing, yeah. Uh -huh. And global value is 21 bytes. Yeah. There's no need for a Pico. Really? No. This is completely no. over de overdesigned. Well, okay, let's uh, switch this thing, little thing on and we can try if this works. Yeah. Okay, so can we give the guys all this code? Of course. Yeah. Since I haven't wrote it, and it's, oh, it was on the PCB web, PCB way website, anyways. Yeah, it's just a modification. Uh, what we're probably going to do, we'll uh, pack everything together in one compact file mm -hmm. that you simply unpack, start the thing, and simply flash your CPUs with that. 
Okay, great. So I'll put that on my Google Drive and you'll find the link in the video description. Yep. So a little CPU down there is producing a square wave. Look at this. Yeah. So yeah. this is the code running on the CPU while it's still in the program. Yeah. And I uh, can can simulate the button presses with this one. Okay. And keep in mind, this isn't a button. I'm just faffing around here. So uh, oh. I probably got some heavy debouncing, heavy bouncing here. Oh, that was no, there, there was a second. There was the. Uh, this is always on. Yeah. So fifty percent. Fifty percent. Oh yeah, yeah. Eighty percent. One hundred percent. And uh, yeah, this was me. This is with a little faffing around. Okay. Why I see it doesn't work. But really we can well. see it actually is doing basically what we wanted yeah. to do. And this would be. Oh, always, this is hundred percent. This is all, this is five volts. This now. would be always on. Yeah. yeah that's five volt. That's naught volt. That's yeah. ground. Yeah. 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 We have four states there. Yeah. Okay, so we can see the code basically works. Mm -hmm. In that case, then, I think we just now need to order the PCBs. PCB way. We don't need to add this at the moment to a shared project because we want to test it first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll just go into Instant Quote. And from here, we can upload our Gerber file. Add. And here is the Gerber file which was generated automatically by the design software. And it says it's detected a two layer board size. We can see we could actually look at this on the online Gerber view, but we know what it looks like anyway. So we can now just put in the parameters we want. So we can go with one millimeter thick PCB. I have quite a few choices here. Yeah. We can have color. So the channel color red <laughs> with white silk screen, which was the default anyway. Yeah. And since we don't have any, uh, Three mount materials, this is all. Yeah, is yeah. It, yeah. And you can see that we will get five PCBs that cost us five dollars. And I have some money knocked off there because I have already put some shared projects. And you know Ooh. what, guys? When you put shared projects in, you actually earn a commission. Ooh. And the commission will then go into your account. So in actual fact, the total for this one is four dollars eighty five. Can't yeah. make them yourself for that price. Exactly, yeah. you can't. Okay, guys, so we'll get those ordered and then we'll put this together and see how this works. And I agree with Detlef, the original one, and all credit to the designer, by the way, was just somewhat over engineered. Somewhat, yeah. Again, <laughs> guy, if you're watching this, please don't feel bad, but there are some things you can do better. Yeah, and the rest of you guys talk about it down there. And we look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electro Repair. Ciao for now, guys. Yeah.